All right, Snoop Dogg tells Eminem after he dissed him on his new album, Murder, Murder to be B-Side, whatever it was. Apparently, it did come in at number one, but it didn't do the regular Slim Shady numbers. And pop-up albums getting kind of old. I know Jay, like Beyonce used to do them and, you know, just pop-up albums. And also, that allows yo music not to be bootlegged or streamed or whatever, but uh, or illegally streamed. But let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell like comment button, share the video in. Basically, Snoop said he better hope that he don't answer that or respond to that soft shit. And it was soft. And, you know, at the end of the day, I ain't listened to Eminem since um, Superman, you know, since the Eminem show. And that was a dope album at the time. Um, What America! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, that's the really last time I purchased an album. But, yeah, some other good stuff. You had no love, no love. You know, yeah, that joint going. But, I mean... At the same time, you know, what's so funny about that? And Snoop was like, well, he made, Dre made the best version of him. And that's true. And Dre gave us the best version of Snoop to that time. But a lot of things what Snoop said about the guys that he listed on his top, you know, his top MC list, like Curtis Blow. And those guys, he basically said, you notice none of my peers are on this list. Everybody that came from before me, you know, guys like Melly Mag, Grandmaster Flash, Sugar Hill Gang, even though, they wasn't really, uh, you know, receptive as or accepted as real rap. But that's what he said. You know, basically he said he naming everybody that came before him. And while, without the pioneers, you don't have Eminem. You know, without the foundation of of that, if the Sugar Hill game, don't, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, to the, and a lot of people talking about. I remember Future was like, you know, people got mad and say people talking about Future, but who said a hip? That was that wasn't even Sugar Hill Gang wasn't even accepted by the streets as real rap. You know, that was, that was, uh, that, that was the first real commercial rap song, but, but it wasn't, it, it was like Drake because the real people in the streets, you know, they end up coming after that. Like people accept the iced tea colors cause he got that from Philly from school. D, but then you had grandmaster flash and then you had run DMC, rock him, big daddy Kane. So to, to me, without them and without even Beastie Boys didn't write their own stuff, Brass Monkey, without the Beastie Boys, it ain't no Eminem, you know? That was the, the 80s was the was the foundation of rap. Now, uh, that wasn't, I think, uh, the sister uh, for you, Lashia, she said that, I think she said, I can't remember, I think she said 88 was the greatest year in rap. In a lot of people's opinion, 94 was the greatest year in rap. OK, you know, but the 90s was just the I mean, the rap peaked out in the 90s, to be honest. That was the golden age to me because it wasn't so 80 ish. And 80s was dope. You know, you had some some good production, but the 90s. But you can't get credit to the 90s and the 2010s and the 20s without giving credit to where it started at. And that was started. The rap started what they say in Bronx. But you can't give credit without KRS one without iced tea without, we can't credit nobody else so the 80s is just as responsible for 90s rap but we didn't think 90s raps was gonna tap out in the 90s and towards the end of the 90s it was dope you had dmx who went who had went platinum the same year you had eminem coming out you know and eminem was something that a lot of people ain't heard before you know and the 2000s went bad and that's kind of when the south kind of tipped the scales to them and you got to shout out to the south because outcast ugk eight ball mjg you know, they they lay they was laying that foundation, Lil Flip. They was laying that foundation for the South to be where it's at now. Because without uh Scarface, you know, without you know, without those guys, Luda don't get where he at. Jeezy and Gucci don't get where it tip don't get. So the South as a collective union, I'm kind of giving a rap lecture here, and I can do this all day. The South as a collective unit, they stood on the foundation. Of them. And some people I'm probably forgetting. You know what I'm saying? You know, David Banner. You know, he he prospered because of that. Big Crit. J. Cole. Without without them laying three six without three six mafia laying the tracks down, you know, they was Grammy uh, uh, artists of uh, uh, Grammy winners, artists of winner, I think for the production of uh um for the movie uh Hustle and Fly was a good movie. You know, A Bar MJG, they had a dope sound. And all the other little, all the everybody else that was underground putting that work in, yo, Gotti, all them wouldn't be nowhere without them. 
And I say all that to say this with Eminem. Snoop. Snoop just was basically saying he ain't that fucking great to me. And that's how people feel going back in retrospect. His music did age like bananas. All that. You forgot, forgot about Dre. That's still dope. But all that. This looks like a job for me. He was like my homie GM Cash. He was comedy rap. He was comedy rap before they made comedy dad rap uh, uh, popular. You know, GM Cash, he from Detroit like me. He got a dope comedy um, YouTube channel where he rapping. So check that out. Um, but yeah, Eminem was comedy rap. He was something you hadn't seen. The Beastie Boys was brand. And then Vanilla Ice, doom, doom, doom. The third bass was dope. You know, MC Search, he's been right on Detroit whew, about 20 years ago. They was dope, but we hadn't heard nobody like Eminem who lyrically, Vanilla Ice, you had him too, that lyrically was superior. You know, they was looking for the next Eminem, Bubba Sparks and Action Bronson, um, MGK, Yellow Wolf. Everybody was trying to find that next Eminem. And don't get it twisted, like Eminem got accepted by the brothers. It was to the point where Benzino was putting out that stuff that he said about black women, you know, but weren't nobody trying to hear Benzino. Because remember Benzino, they had they had gotten to a big brawl with, uh, with Rough Riders and DMX and them. At one of the shows. So, Benzino always been looked at as a lame Boston nigga. Let's keep it 100, you know? But then again, Benzino, um, who's that dude? The wild Tone Loke. You had some dudes. You had some dudes that really put in work. But the dudes that really put in work, not, they, they weren't popular. The realest in it, the, the real people that put in work, that was clapping niggas, that was really gusto from CB4, the real ones. They, they wasn't respected. They really couldn't rap and put words together. The niggas that was really selling keys and breaking them down to bows and had to start off from half tracks and all that, they wasn't being glorified. Like Benzino really sold crack. Benzino really was in the streets. You see Big Meech and Southwest, see them niggas ain't trying to rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, he really put in work, but he don't understand. He don't understand that Eminem love. Eminem was something that the world hadn't seen before. You know, and a lot of people got to accept it for what it was. But with Snoop, Snoop just saying, I don't think the nigga was that great. And let's be honest, Eminem don't have an album that can stand up to doggy style. That's a top 10 album of all the time. You know, I listened to Ben Zeno interview on Queen's Flip, and he said, uh, Reasonable Doubt, top 10. No, it's not, buddy. This is my opinion. Everything can, he only got top 10, top 10 albums. And that one don't make the cut for me. Reason why was a good album, but to me it didn't transcend. To for ten for you to be top ten, it gotta be super dope or it gotta transcend. That didn't transcend shit. And then when Reasonable Doubt came out, nobody was listening to that. You know, because you're talking about ten albums. That's that's just you doggy style, chronic, illmatic, you know, uh ready to die, all eyes on me. Jesus. Some people might put me against the world in there instead of all eyes on me. She got a lot of great first album. You know, some people like Life After Death, that was dope. Um, gee, man, it's hard to put 10 albums, The Diary. Who? It's hard to put 10 albums together. It's hard to say, I got, you I mean, everybody got to just make your top 10 favorite albums. Because it's hard to put 10 great albums together. Because to me, the last great album of this generation, as far as rap, the like truly revolutionary that you can make a case to be in top 10, 15, 20 was Kendrick Lamar, Good City, Mad Kid. Then you got Stank On Ya, Seven. Oh, shit, it's hard, bro. You had to. Mob Deep had a few good out. We had a lot of good albums. I mean, 50 Cent, Get Richard, Don Trying. Woo! It's, it's hard to put 10, but, you know, what Snoop was just trying to say, like, nigga, if the nigga was black, if the white boy was black, you know, wouldn't nobody really be hoop hollering and saying, you the best around. Nobody else can hold you down. Daniel, you're the best. Cobra Kai dope too. I didn't do two, three episodes, two episodes. Nobody be saying, you know, if he was a, that's basically what he's saying. If he was black, he wouldn't be getting the recognition that he getting. But then again, but then again, I mean, that's how it always is when you breaking stuff. When you, when you breaking the mold and you doing something that hadn't been done before. That's the way it is. It's like Rosa Parks sitting in the on sitting on a bus. That's that was revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? What Martin Luther King did was revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? Like like certain things when you break in the mold, 
what Michael Jordan did to for basketball was magic and revolutionary. So what Eminem did, it was revolutionary. It's something that we had a lyrical white boy that wrote his raps. You know, would he have been good without Dre? Yeah, he would have been good. You know, but Dre took him to the next level. You know, but at the same time, I get what Snoop's saying. But then again, when you're talking about Snoop Dogg, the original Dr. Dre protege, with one of the greatest albums of all time, Doggy Style. Go listen to it. It's unskippable. From from the in, from the intro with Lady Ray, it's unskippable. You know, The Last Meal, a great album. Rhythm and Gangsta, another great album. Blue Carpentry, whatever it's called, that was a good album. Like this nigga got stripes. You gotta understand, he wrote a lot on the on the uh, on the chronic. One, two, three, and to the folk. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. He wrote that whole song. You know, he, he his pen was dope. So when somebody like, like if Ice Cube said it, he dare not answer to Ice Cube. Ice Cube pen carry NWA. Him and Ren in the DOC, he carried the NWA. So you can't talk about somebody that popularized gangster rap. Schooly D created Ice Ice T brought it to the West Coast. Ice Cube and Dr. Dre and DJ Quick took and Ren took it to another level. Easy took it to another level. So you can't talk about the forefathers of rap. You don't you don't have that capacity. And a lot of these niggas don't got that pass. You know, but it is what it is. And you know, it ain't even worth, you know, uh dissing him back, Snoop. But hey, let me know, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, call, response, your video quest. All my social media links in the description. Fast forward reach me is Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, call, response, your video question on advertising your business on the channel. Also got a Facebook group. Want to make a donation? Cash up. Excuse me, CJ Good313, PayPal link in the description. Let me know what you guys think.